What is up guys, Ryan here with another After Effects tutorial. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to add cursor effects to your UI prototypes. You guys have seen this everywhere, whether it be on my projects on Dribbble or just really anywhere else on Behance Dribbble or around the web. Um, a lot of people like to animate their prototypes to give it a more realistic feel um, and a better understanding of how the app's gonna work. And a lot of you guys have asked me, you know, how do I create this or how do I go about adding this to my project? So that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do today. Um, I'll actually have a project link in the description for you guys to follow along with. It's actually linked to my Dribbble page. And with that link, uh, if you go down here and click on UI tutorial project file, it will automatically download and you guys can easily follow along with the video. Um, so as I said before, this is what I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to show you guys how to make this little cursor effect that you guys can use for mobile prototyping uh, or really just about anything that you want to show off of how um, a certain UI f is going to work or function. So let's jump into After Effects. Um, I'm really not going to be showing you guys exactly how I you know, went about designing um, the actual prototype itself. Um, all I did was I uh, designed it in Photoshop. Uh, laid everything out accordingly, and then I exported it into After Effects uh, with a layered composition, and then I was able to animate the individual um, assets. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you want me to do that in a later video, let me know, and I'd be happy to uh, make a video on that. Um, so what we're going to do is once you get the file downloaded or, you know, whether you're making a new one by yourself or just follow along, um, if you're following along with this one, you're going to have to double click on this uh, composite layer here. And that's going to open up the expanded layered PSD, which has all the layers that I exported in from Photoshop. So as we can see here, if we hit play, um, you know, it's just seeing it again. Um, as you can see, it's not really just a normal circle circle cursor. I actually have like a little drop um, or a drag tail behind it that actually makes it feel like it's being um, dragged along like you'd be swiping on a phone. Um, I just was trying to experiment uh, experiment with that to see how it looks. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we're actually just going to delete that layer there. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up here to Layer, New, and we're going to go to Solid. Um, you're going to want to make the solid um, whatever color you want the cursor to be, whether it be turquoise, black, white, whatever. Make sure you have the color that you want and just hit OK. Now that's going to make a solid go completely over our entire canvas. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here and grab a circle or eclipse tool. And we're just going to drag out holding shift to get uh, equal scale constraint. And right about there looks good. And we're just going to center it up where we want. Now as you can see here, our anchor point, which is this little icon right here, is not in the center. So you want to make sure that is in the center. And to get that into the center of the circle, you want to hit Y on your keyboard, and this little icon is going to appear. Once that appears, you can just drag that into the middle, and there you go. Now your anchor point is centered within the shape. So the first thing that we're going to do is obviously just up, uh, position it accordingly. Right about there looks good. Um, now, if I didn't explain it before, what we did is with that solid, when we dragged the circle out, we actually made a, a mask which went over the shape. So if we actually turn the mask on and off, um, you can actually see that the shape is still there. Um, but for now, we're going to keep the shape on, or I mean the mask on, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the point of movement of where um, everything starts to scroll. So if we go out here to our timeline and we figure out right about there, is when it starts to scroll. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually keyframe this. So we're going to open up our mask layer here, and we're also going to open up our transform layer here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to add a position keyframe, and uh, we're going to add one there, and then we're going to drag out our timeline to right about there, which is about 10-ish frames later. And we're just going to add, um, by holding shift and left arrowing on your keyboard, you can just tab it on over. Um, really doesn't matter. You can just um, estimate really where you want it. We can go back and fix it later. Um, so once we have that, if we just look, you can see that we have a simple cursor. It's nothing fancy, very linear, um, nothing too crazy. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, add some opacity so it can fade in and both fade out. So if we go up here to say keyframe 10 and we turn the opacity down here to zero, keyframe it, and then go back out here to keyframe 20 
and turn the opacity on. Actually, we're gonna move this in a bit, maybe about two frames after our initial keyframe. Boom, there we go. So if we look, it fades in, it comes on, boom. So we also now want it to fade out. So what we can do is we actually also just copy and paste these keyframes here, go to where it ends on about 30 frames and then tab it in two points and then paste it, hitting Command V on your keyboard or Control V on Windows. Right click on them, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. And that's gonna flip the initial keyframes that we copied and pasted. So if we play this back now, you can see that it fades in and fades out. And right now we're kind of getting a basic effect. And like I said, it's pretty easy, but now we're gonna start going into uh, it deeper and start making it a little bit more stylized. So what we can do is we can go and grab our uh, two position keyframes that we already made. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go up here to our graph editor and as you can see, there's a little bit of a mess of stuff here. So if you want to minimize, you know, what's being displayed, you can go down here and you can turn off show reference graph. And that's going to minimize what you're going to be seeing within um, the graph editor. So if we zoom in, you can see that our pink, um, our, this pink line here is our position tabs. And what this is going to do, we're going to actually ease it in a bit better um, to make it a little bit more of a realistic uh, push and pull. So if we go down here with uh, both of our keyframes still selected, if we go down here and click on this little easy ease um, icon, you can see that now it's our basic easy ease. Um, it's like the same thing if you right clicked on it and hit easy ease. Um, so that's all nice and good, but now we can actually go in, in there and start making it look a little bit um, smoother. So if we go and grab this uh, anchor point on the right and drag it up, you can see our speed graph starts to move. And if we play this back, you can actually see that it's going to obviously, you got to treat this like a roller coaster. So it goes up super fast and then it comes down on a, on a very nice um, downward slope. So it comes in fast and kind of slows down a bit. And that's kind of giving us a little bit more of a realistic um, you know, like a real, uh, a realistic swipe. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, but I think I might extend this keyframe out to 35 frames. So it has a bit of a bigger slowdown. Yeah, that looks really good. Um, boom. Perfect. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is well, before we go on to anything else, I think we might add some motion blur. So if motion blur is not enabled on your timeline, um, uh, click on that and it will turn blue once it's enabled for the entire timeline and then you can go down here and click it and enable it for the specific layer so now if we hit play you can see that we have some nice motion blur to it and to me you know it's really up to preference I like motion blur because I think it adds a little bit of a more realistic tone to it but it's all up to you um, so boom, there we go a little motion blur boom done so the next thing we're going to do is click off the graph editor and go back here to our normal keyframes. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually start adding the um, little tag drill that I showed you before. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here with our mask open. We're going to go over here to mask path. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to zoom in for this so we can see it a bit better. Um, as you can see now we have our mask selected. So we want that tail to come in right about where it's being dragged in at. So right there, we're going to add a keyframe for the mask path. So we're going to keyframe that, boom, right there. And then we're going to go to say to right about here. That's probably the max velocity point of where this cursor is going to be meeting its fastest point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to select, oh, whoop, my mistake, we're actually going to deselect that, go up here to our pen tool and hit the convert to vertex tool. And if we click that, we can actually see that now it's added a little bit of some Bezier pass to it. So now we can manipulate it any way we see fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to just bounce this outward by holding shift and going like that. And as you can see, now we are getting a bit of a, a tail drag off. And that's essentially what our goal was to begin with. So if you see, it goes from a flat circle to a nice little teardrop shape. And that's already looking pretty good. But now we kind of want that shape to fade out. So if we copy our first keyframe in our mask path and then go to right about here where it starts fading off, if we hit Command V, as you can see, now we get this nice little droplet effect, but it's going a bit too fast. So what we'll do is we'll drag this out way longer and we'll keep going till it feels 
just about right. So what we'll do is I'm actually going to go back into the graph editor by selecting our middle keyframe and end keyframe. And we're going to manipulate this a bit. We're going to drag this up and we're just going to see how it feels. If we go back. Oh, <laughs> let's not do that. Hmm, let's see. At this point, it's really just up to preference. Um, let's zoom out and get a better look at what we have. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I mean, you can go in there and fine tune it a bit more, um, but that's the essential, you know, basis of it. Um, yeah, so let's just get a full preview. Boom, done. All right, so what we'll do is, um, instead of going back and reanimating everything to get the next swipe, which is right about here where it, where it swipes back, what we'll do is, is we'll copy these layers. So if we select these, not the whole layer, if we select these, boom, hit Command C, and then go back out to here, where, I, where it starts to scroll back, if we can find it, boom, right there. We're going to copy and paste it right there. We're going to right click on everything and hit time reverse keyframes like we did before. So if we take this right there, you can see it comes in, boom. But the thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to adjust the position a bit. So if we go down here to our position keyframes and we adjust it accordingly, we're going to tab the first keyframe in a bit, like right about there. And the end keyframe we can also drag out about right there. Like I said, I'm kind of doing this a bit quickly just because for the sake of the tutorial. Um, but if we hit play, boom, you can see that it kind of drags in very nicely. Um, we need that to come in a bit sooner. So let's, let's move all this right, boom, right about there. But now what we also have to do is we have to adjust the um, graph editor a bit. So if we go back, adjust it, boom, boom, we're going to turn the graph editor the opposite direction. So it goes fast like that. Boom. And that's kind of what we are going for. Um, go back into our normal keyframes um, and we'll just adjust it accordingly. Let's see, hold on, boom. Let's move this keyframe back a bit, like right about there. And we'll also adjust this one accordingly as well, just because I feel like it's going a little bit beyond what we need. Okay, let's see. Let's play this back super quick. Boom. Now the only thing we have to adjust now is we got to adjust the um, tail that goes behind the cursor. So if we go in, Obviously, keep the first keyframe the same, but we're going to have to adjust the middle keyframe. So if we go back and get our convert to vertex tool, if we go back and we just select that specific anchor point, if we go in and right about there, just really just roughly get it. Boom. It's a full circle. Um, and now we got to adjust the other side. So now if we hit one, two, three, tab it out. You can see we get this really nice little tail effect. So now we have it going the opposite direction and boom, there we go. That's the effect we were trying to achieve. So if we zoom out, take a look at it, boom, boom. And uh, I mean, that's really all there is to it. It's very easy and it's actually really fun just to experiment with different types of styles and different uh, cursors and all that kind of stuff. So I really um, suggest you guys really dive into this yourselves and really experiment with what you can do in, um, you know, how it looks, etc. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all my projects I'm doing, check the link in the description for Behance Dribble and Twitter and Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.